Denmark won, England won. Before I start, guys, the revolution is happening. If you are in Kenya, if you're Kenyan, you know what I'm talking about. Finance bill, we're rejecting it. And guys, you need to do something. This thing affects everyone. Even us as content creators, it affects us. So get out there in the streets. Talk to your friends. Tell your friends. Tell your friends to go to the streets. Like, just talk about it. And, yo, we need our voices to be heard. Gen Z, you guys are doing the best job. Amazing job. We'll follow suit. So, Denmark versus England. Game ended 1-1. Um, I didn't get to watch the entire game. I just watched it in bits and parts. I managed to watch... The first goal, I watched the second goal in highlights. And then I managed to watch Trent getting subbed off when the game was actually happening. So afterwards, when we were doing a live uh, Spain versus Italy on TikTok, then I managed to watch a bit of the game. Now, these are just some of the things I saw. I guess the problems are still the same. And I'm going to do something a bit different today. While we were in the live, I told people to tell me what they thought about the game. So I'm just going to go through a few comments from the comment section on TikTok. Shout out to everyone on, on TikTok who joined the live. Um, and yeah, so let's just start with the people. Abdul Talks Football. Abdul Talks Football is comments on every single post. So he's like, England ni matope. Basically, England is mad. Um, look at the difference between the game, this game, um, this game and that game quality-wise. So this is when the Spain and Italy game was happening. Again, you can just easily tell. Like, if you hadn't watched the match, typical Southgate did his thing. Um, then I told him I'm going to watch a game. He's like, don't waste your time. Your boy Rice struggled and Bellaini. So they're calling uh, Jude Bellingham Bellaini. Um, Rude boy was like, Trent Alexander is being wasteful in midfield. Uh, it's better that you couldn't have been called in the squad. Heriat Angi, it was squad. England rely too much on player individual brilliance. They also can't kill off games. That is Henry. Shout out to Henry. Shout out to Rude boy as well. Um, um uh who else? Henry asked a question. Should Palmer get game time next game? Which is a good question because Palmer is, I think he was top three in goals and assists combined, right? In Europe. So he hasn't even played a single minute. We are 180 minutes into the tournament. Rudeboy is like Watkins did something. I saw Watkins do like there was this run where he made, he was just like typical striker, what he does at Aston Villa, which Hurricane doesn't do, because that's just not Hurricane's game, right? Hurricane has Sane, Leroy Zane, and Nabri to do the running for him. He was like, Watkins came on, and the first thing he did was that like turn like on the on the shoulder of the last defender. And then running into the D, like they just barely missed the ball. But you can see how the sharpness and the different um, angle you have, right? When you have someone like Wat Watkins up front. Um, um, then Henry continued, bro wants to, this is Southgate, bro wants to win a game and takes out two of his best players. I'm guessing he's talking about Kane and Saka or Foden, two of the three. And then um, Southgate was greedy to have all English players on form in the squad, hence the disorganization. So Rude Boy is just not happy with how the squad has been built. Um, and they've built, yeah, they've just selected players because of form, but do they actually fit? Do they actually gel, you know? Um, England rely too much on player individual brilliance. They also can't kill off games. So again, these are just points to how Southgate is running this team. Like, it's actually insane to me. Um... Mungai, shout out to Mungai. Mungai has said, if England keep playing like this, they are out in the group stage. England Kicheza, it at all group stage. So that was Mungai's comment. And um, Henry continued, Henry, Henry had a lot to say. This adage of not changing a winning squad cost England the game. Also, having three players playing out of position. Ah, this England team is frustrating. Henry, I feel you. So in this moment, he was talking about Trippier. He was talking about um, Trent Alexander-Arnold and uh, who's the other third person who's playing out of position? I'll remember. So yeah, Trippier, Trent, and um, who, who, who was playing in this team? What am I forgetting? What am I forgetting? Foden. Probably you spoke about Foden. Walker. Because Walker plays in the back three. Anyway, so you have a squad. You've selected a squad of players. This is one of my biggest gripes with... Okay, I have many, but let me start with them, With one of them. You've selected Adam Wharton and you've selected Kobe Maino. These people have played in midfield for their clubs. Kobe Maino has played in midfield for Manchester United. The pressure by itself makes him a better player in midfield than someone who played at right back. I'm, I'm just saying, like, 
I'd rather have someone, he may not be the best player in that position, but at least he's a player in that position. You know, why am I playing someone out of position and then really forcing the trend story and I haven't played with him, with him consistently. Even with, with uh, Klopp, if you see how he used Trent, yes, he'd use him in intervals, but he's also smart about it. He'd put people who can defend around him. He'd make sure there's runners up front, that that, uh, that long ball is, a, that out ball is a possibility. McAllister would do a lot of the getting the ball from the back because that is not stre- uh, t- Trent's strength. Of getting the of of going to the goalkeeper and getting the ball from the defense, you know. So those are just some of the things that I've seen, and I'm like, yo, Southgate. And then now the the thing for me that really just killed it um, is that I was watching uh, his interview. I watched Southgate's interview, and he mentioned something about like we've been for about the last seven eight years we've really been trying to get a midfield. We've really been struggling in midfield. So then why did you select Adam Wharton and why did you select Kobe Mino? If you're not going to play them in this moment when you're looking for midfielders, you selected Adam Wharton because of how well he's playing in midfield. And even if you don't play Adam Wharton, let's just say you are selecting because of pressure. You're selecting because you want experience. This year in midfield, forget Declan Rice, there is no one who had more pressure on him than Conor Gallagher. Conor Gallagher, starting the season... Even Chelsea players didn't like him. Chelsea players wanted him out of their club. He ended up becoming captain. And there were games when Arsenal beat Chelsea 5-0. He's the only person who's willing to go and talk to the media. He's the only person who's putting himself out there. He's the captain of Chelsea, a team that has won... Okay, they haven't won Champions League recently. But that's a big team. It's a big team in England. You know, being a captain of one of the big teams in England is not an easy thing. From a scrutiny perspective, you're scrutinized at a different level. Being captain of England is even worse, right? Um, if there's anyone who understands pressure, if there's anyone who's handled themselves in a manner which is worthy, he may not be the best player on the field, but he'll give you 110% every day. And he's a captain, he's a leader. At this moment, that's what you need. Why are you not starting Rice and Gallagher in midfield? You know, like, it, it doesn't make sense to me. Like, you, I know you're really trying to force trend. Theoretically, it makes sense, right? Like, theoretically, having a passer like Trent makes sense. But yesterday, we were also having this discussion when we were doing our live. Being a passer, being a good passer and being a good crosser are two totally different things, right? Trent doesn't have the awareness of a midfielder simply because he just hasn't played there. That's just not... He, does, he doesn't... It, the instincts don't... It can be taught over time, but they don't come naturally. They're not instincts that come naturally to him. That is why someone trains in a position over and over again. So certain things happen to you naturally. As a defensive midfielder, you 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 if your goalkeeper has the ball or your defense has the ball, you go like you go and op- create yourself as an option, right? And the keeper passes to you or the defender passes to you. If there's pressure from behind, you know whether to turn left, turn right because you'll always be scanning if uh, where this pressure is coming from. And your touch, you've worked on your touch. You've worked on that first touch to the left, first touch to the right, first touch back to the keeper, right? Back to the keeper is bad because if someone is pressing, if you give it back to the keeper, he doesn't change direction. He just keeps going straight. So that's not an option. Those are the things that Trent doesn't do instinctively. I'm sure he knows. I'm sure I know. I wouldn't do it instinctively because I haven't played there consistently over months or even a season or seasons, right? So for him, it doesn't come instinctively. He's a very good player. You just can't have him on the field in midfield. Yet you have Adam Wharton, Kobe Mino, and Conor Gallagher on the bench. It does not make sense to me at all. And then you go to the press conference and then you start seeing, like, we've been working to try and get a midfielder. Ah, no, that, 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 was, that was uncalled for. And I also need to really defend the players because what are they supposed to do, to be honest? This is one of the best generations of England. You don't even need, like, even think about it. If you put Rice there and you put Bellingham and Foden up front and you start with, because right now they don't have an outlet, uh, um, Anthony Gordon, start with Anthony Gordon. He's the only person who can do, there's a lot of talk about Rashford, even in the comment section and in the lives. He's the only person who does anything like Rashford, right? Um, the, the, the people saying Rashford should have been in the squad, but... He, he killed his chances when he did his nonsense and flew to Sujiwa in the middle of a season. So coaches look at those things and they're like, yo, discipline matters, you know? You, you can't act like I, I, I am owed a position. Discipline matters. He was not in form. He was, he, like, he just, you can't pick him. Like, you just can't pick him. Just out of, out of uh, um, what is it called? 
out of um, um, principle. You cannot pick him. But Anthony Gordon gives you that outlet. You still put Phil Ford in there and put Bellingham. Become an attacking side. Embrace it. Don't fear it. You have Kel Walker at the back. He's not really attacking that much. You have Gehi, who to me is your best player at this moment. He's your, um, like at this moment, he's your best player. But again, he's going through, he's a, he's a player who's gone through struggle. People who've gone through struggle will do well in teams that are struggling, right? Because they know how the struggle is and they're like, yo, I've seen worse and this is nothing. Declan Rice has played at West Ham where he used to defend, defend and play as a DMF all his life. Like, he has struggled. Um, who else? Gehi. Before they got the new coach, the former Antrecht Frankfurt coach, the one who just took them on a crazy run, they struggled with Roy Hodgson. Like, and by struggle, I mean every week you're facing a team and you have, you're facing almost 20 shots. You are constantly defending or you're in a, facing a relegation team and it's one nil. And they're struggling. And you also, you, you know, if you lose, you might be in a relegation fight. You know, the, those people who've gone through struggle do well in Southgate's team, if you think about it. Saka, to be honest, his first season, first two seasons with Arsenal, with the main team, he struggled because we were a struggling team. And he was our left back, he was our right back. He's gone through struggle. Conor Gallagher has gone through struggle. That's the person you need in that midfield. You need someone who has struggled under Southgate in this current setup. Another coach, maybe he'll come and change things. But... Yeah, I um I'm just I, I'm just done with Southgate. Like I'm not I'm not even mad at him because at this point that this is him. It's everyone else around him. I am more mad at the people who still gave him a job, gave him a new contract because now the players have to defend him. They have to say oh we'll we'll bounce back, we'll do these things. And I'm sure even the players are just looking at this guy and be like, "Dude, what are you doing?" Surely. Like at this point the people who are doing their coaching badges, right? <laughs> the people who are playing in these Euros and they're all doing their coaching badges. People like Jorginho, I have a feeling Modric might be doing his coaching badge. So there are people who are doing their coaching badges. These people can coach better than Southgate. They understand modern football. You can see all the teams that have your typical, oh, let's pack the bus type of thing. Look at Steve Clark, first game of the of the tournament, Scotland coach. They decided to pack the bus, 5-1, easy, like, that it's not work. That thing is all going to work in football nowadays. That's not how football works. To be fair to Steve Clark, second game he really, the team really showed heart. He leaned on his strengths. His strengths were a team uh, that really uh, focuses on passion. Play with passion. Our fans are here. Let's play with passion. Let's play for the fans, and let's lean on it. And then physicality. Those are Scotland's two strengths. They went back to it. I can't even tell you what Southgate's strength is. Like defending is one of his strengths for sure, right? But that is good for like quarterfinals, semifinals, round of 16. But what good is that if you actually don't get there? I'm not saying they won't get there, but you're playing like you don't want to get, to get there, you know. And you need to entertain at some point. Like, you can have the most skilled and most generational talents, the most generational talents in your team, and you are just playing like this. So I really feel for the players. I really feel for I, I, English fans, I don't know. Um, English media, I, I don't feel for them. Like, whatever they get, they, I, life life happens. If that's what they deserve, yeah, then let's so be it. But I don't know, man. Like, this Southgate thing is actually frustrating just because I'm, I'm just, I just don't like incompetence, especially when you have so much talent, you know. Um, it's, it's, it's saddening. It's saddening. Let me say that. But let's see. Let's see how he does the next game. I'm really curious to see how with what squad he selects, who plays, and all of that. So... Yeah, that was that was more of a rant on England than Denmark versus England. Um, shout out to Denmark. They got uh, another point. Um, and now this puts them in um, good position as well because now they have two points. Uh, the goal from Yulman was really, really good. Like, again, another goal from outside the box. This tournament, every single game we've had a goal outside the box apart from the, dead, the first Denmark game, the first England game. So Denmark versus Slovenia. England versus Serbia and Spain versus Italy. Those are the three games where we haven't had a goal from outside the box. Every single game has had a goal outside the box. I think we have 13 or 12 games that have had a goal from outside the box. Um, yeah, Denmark just keep grinding. Like with veterans, they have many people who are 30 plus, probably their last tournaments and stuff, but they're just grinding. They're just grinding. Um, Rasmus Hoilun up front, 
I hear he wasn't that great. Um, I really want to watch their next game. They're the one team who I didn't manage to watch their first game properly against Slovenia. I didn't manage to watch this game properly. So yeah, I'll be very keen to watch their next game and actually give you a more detailed tactical analysis of how they play. I've watched more of Serbia and more of uh, Slovakia than I've done Denmark. So again, I've watched every single game apart from those two properly. So I'll watch them again and then by the time we get to the next game, I'll have more better feedback, better detail, tactical analysis and breakdown on Denmark. But yeah, England Southgate, I don't know, man. It's frustrating. But yeah, whatever. <laughs>